Sprinkly salt. Salt from sea to cellar. If you have ever been to the seaside and had a swim in the sea, you'll know that seawater is very salty. In fact, this water, which comes from the Atlantic Ocean, is actually 3% salt. Here at this salt factory in Anglesey, which is an island off the northwest coast of Wales, they make sea salt by extracting it from seawater so that people can use it when cooking food. To make two tonnes of sea salt, first, 20,000 litres of seawater are pumped from the sea through these pipes into this huge holding tank at the factory. Did you know that 20,000 litres is enough water to fill a swimming pool? Next, the seawater is filtered to clean it of any sand and seaweed before it is pumped into this evaporator where it begins to be heated up. As the seawater is heated up to boiling point, steam rises off it. The steam doesn't contain any salt, so the remaining water becomes even saltier. Once enough water has evaporated, it is pumped out of the evaporator and into the blending tank, where different batches of seawater, which are now called brine, are blended together so that they have the correct percentage of salt for the next step. The amount of salt in the brine is called its salinity. The salty brine is then pumped into these shallow tanks, which are called crystallizers. This is where the salt crystals will form. The salt harvester stirs the brine in a figure of eight shape like this, to ensure it is well mixed and the water in the brine evaporates evenly. As the crystals start to grow on the brine surface, they eventually get too heavy to float and sink to the bottom of the tank. When the salt crystals have finished forming, the harvesters gently scoop out the flakes and place them in these plastic trays. Next, they rinse the crystals until the right texture and degree of sparkle is achieved. Then the piles of salt are put into low temperature ovens to dry. A very small amount of moisture is left in the salt because this helps to keep it crisp. When it is ready, the salt is weighed and bagged up, then packed into boxes and jars, ready to be sent all over the world for people to use when cooking their food.